So copyright IB from their syllabus, qualitative data includes all non-numerical information obtained from observations, not from measurement. And quantitative, quantity like number, quantitative data are obtained from measurements and are always associated with random errors, uncertainties determined by the apparatus and by human limitations such as reaction times. I'm not completely in agreement with that. Always associated with random errors and by apparatus? What about if I see two eggs on a table? I use no apparatus then and I'm sure there's only two. Anyway, if you can turn your qualitative data into quantitative data, your words into numbers, then uh, those numbers will allow you to see patterns more easily in the data. You're going to be able to do better science. So instead of saying red like the blood or hot or loud, instead of using those qualitative values, you could use quantities. You could say for red, maybe give the wavelength in nanometers, hot. You could give the temperature. And loud, you could use decibels. Numbers are better. And think about this, for qualitative, your observation should be before, during, and after. And ideally, any extra observations you have might allow you to expand upon any errors that you see. So for example, in titration, if uh, the red transparent solution turned blue when I added the alkali, well, that illuminates a bit of the error there because uh, ideally it should be purple when you're finished between red and blue. But that's very hard to get. Maybe only one drop will do it. So you added too much and you, you went too far. So that could inform an error in your titration. Or another classic example, the enthalpy of alcohols. Uh, you got a yellow flame uh, and the sooty bottom of the can. It was also incomplete combustion. There's carbon at the bottom. It's supposed to be making carbon dioxide and water. And all of that implies that you had incomplete combustion, which means that your delta H value is going to be of too small a magnitude. And we're done. <laughs>